So uh, this is the Fuego status and roadmap. Um, I apologize if you're not a Fuego developer. Some of this stuff is kind of detailed and it may, may be hard to follow. Uh, but I am going to, uh, Fuego is, is the Spanish word for fire. So I always use flames <laughs> in all my stuff. Uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction about Fuego just in case you've never heard of it. Um, uh, what it's about, and then I'll get into the status, some of the projects that we've got going on currently, and uh, just a little bit of a roadmap where we want to go. Uh, I have a lot more detail uh, that we can cover. There's, well, I'll talk about this later. We have a hackathon tomorrow morning at Sony headquarters in Shinagawa. So if you're interested, you can come to that. Um, but again, that one's going to be even more intense in terms of uh, Fuego detail knowledge. Uh, so anyway, so micro introduction to Fuego is Fuego is Jenkins and a bunch of scripts and some prepackaged tests all running inside a container. There you go. Uh, it's easy. Um, so this is the architecture diagram and it's kind of uh, quick here. Uh, basically, uh, you've got a host machine that runs that Docker container. Uh, in, and we, uh, when you download Fuego, you build the container, and uh, inside the container uh, is a, a build system uh, where you build the test programs, you deploy them to the target board, collect the results back, do some analysis on the results, and then we present that uh, via Jenkins interface. So there's a web control interface. Uh, that you can use that. The way we build the Docker container and the way it's implemented on your host, most of the artifacts from testing actually reside on your host system. They're not inside the container. So things like the logs and uh, the build artifacts are actually sitting out on your host machine. They're not in your container. Um, and that's useful like if you have to change the container or, or uh, examine the files uh, from elsewhere. This vision, super high level vision of Fuego, is we want to do for testing what open source has done for coding. Uh, there are significant parts of the testing process uh, that are unshared, ad hoc, private. Uh, they don't, we don't share a lot of things in the test, uh, testing area. Uh, there's really no good reason for this. Uh, it's just that every company has a tradition of going off and having its QA department do their own thing. Um, and so we should be sharing a lot more than we are. So that's not to say that there's no sharing, because Jenkins itself is a test framework that is open source that a lot of companies are using. Uh, so and it's basically it's a job control scheduling and uh, visualization tool. Uh, but like the test programs themselves, there are some test programs that are open source, things like Yelp, uh, Linux Test Project, and a lot of a lot of specific tests uh, that are open source. Uh, but it's it's still very hard to use. Uh, so what we want to do in Fuego is we want to actually promote the sharing of the tests themselves, the test methods, the results, uh, the way that we share code now. So that uh, basically make everybody's life easier and, and do a build, uh, make, create a foundation that we can build on. Uh, we want to get easy to create, share, and discover new tests, um, and make test results e easy to share and evaluate. So we have some core principles. Uh, one, uh, we actually should, the system should be capable of finding bugs. <laughs> That's what a test system is for. Uh, we want to allow sharing, uh, and I have a whole presentation on, on this, uh, so I'm not going to go into detail on these. I don't think I am. Yeah, no. Oops. Um, we want to, we want Fuego to be usable by a very wide audience, and so Fuego has very, very minimal requirements. Uh, a lot of other test frameworks, for instance, Lava, uh, has has some requirements on how the board has to be configured, the hardware capabilities of the board. We have very, very little. If you can give us a POSIX shell, uh, about 15 or 16 very, very common utilities, most all of the which are implemented by BusyBox, and a uh, network interface to the board, then we can test it with Fuego. Um, we want it to be customizable. Uh, and it's applicable to embedded, and by that we mean that it's actually structured in a way that we that works with embedded systems. Um, there are a couple of attributes of that. Most embedded systems are cross-compiled, so we cross-compile. Uh, most embedded systems are small footprints where you can't do the build locally, so uh, that's also the case. And so anyway, 
So a lot of the artifacts in the architecture are based upon us being able to uh, test embedded. We want to make it easy to use, and eventually we want to support scalability via, de via decentralization. Uh, that's too long to get into now, but that's one of our core principles. Um, so let's talk about the current status. Uh, the 1.2.0 release, uh, nicknamed Combustion, uh, because like everything in Linux, we have names that have an alphabetical first letter that goes to the alphabet. Uh, so we're on our C release. Uh, the last one was Blaze. This is Combustion. It was released on October 12th. There was a lot of work over the summer, but it was a little rough around the edges. So uh, about a month later, we, we followed up with 1.2.1 release. Uh, that was released November 15th. It has a bunch of bug fixes and cleanup. We also added functional.k self-test. Uh, so, uh, in theory, uh, this needs a little bit of shaking out, but in theory you can run any of the uh, kernel self-tests with Fuego. Um, we have a new website, uh, fuegotest.org. Uh, we, we had been living in, on bird.org, which is my personal domain, uh, but now we've got our own domain, so we feel like more official. And the wiki, we moved the wiki over to that website, and we've got some miscellaneous projects uh, going on. So um, before we got to 1.2, this was kind of an overview of the feature set we had. So we had a Jenkins front end. Uh, we also have a command line interface for running tests, FTC. Uh, it's containerized. Everything runs in a Docker container. Uh, there are various reasons for that, but basically to make things more reproducible and to ease installation. Um, we have an overlay system in order to support customization of tests. Uh, there's there's various places where you can control how the tests run. Uh, there are board files, uh, there are distro files, uh, what we call specs, which is a, a collection. Well, it's basically it tells you what the a spec is a, a list of uh, test variables that can mostly control how you execute the test program. So, like if you're running something like cyclic test, which is a real time <coughs> test. Um, you may have different ways that you want to run it. You may be using it to test a certain type of latency. You'd have a set of command line options for that. You may be using it to test some other aspect of real time. You'd have different command line options for that. So even for the same test, you have variations that you used. And then how you control those variations is with a plan. So you say, well, uh, I'm doing, I'm testing AGL, so I'm going to run, you know, these 25 tests, and these are the variations I want on each of those tests. And uh, a plan is kind of the collection of things you're going to do for a, a particular test run. Uh, we have a build system that's part of Fuego. Uh, the tests are driven from the host, uh, and that, that's part of the uh, host, host target system that we have. We have multiple transports. We have SSH is our most common one, but we do have a serial transport. So even if all you have is a, a serial console on your board, you should be able to use Fuego on it. Uh, and there are other ones. Um, we have a big collection of tests, about 120 right now, uh, and then we do results parsing and post-processing. So that all existed before we got to 1.2, and 1.2.1 is kind of the, this is the new stuff we've added in the past about six months or so. Um, uh, unified output format, the test dependency system, uh, this whole long list, I'm going to actually go through each of these, so you don't need to read that. Um, so the unified output format. So every test, uh, before we would collect up the results uh, and uh, we would boil those down to a single result that we handed back to Jenkins, which was pass or fail. Uh, but now uh, every test produces a run.json file. It's a JSON file that has all of the test results for the individual test cases. Um, and, so, and it's the same format whether it's a benchmark test or a functional test. Uh, and it has a bunch of metadata about the test run. So you need all kinds of information, the start time of the test, the board, what kernel version was the test was running on. So there's a bunch of information that's in that run.json file, but also uh, the test results themselves are in an organized fashion. Uh, a lot of these very big complex tests, and the same is true of K-self tests, uh, have very, are, are just umbrellas for a huge number of test cases. And so you have to organize them somehow. So We've organized them into test sets, test cases, and measurements. Uh, and this, the format that we've chosen is modeled after uh, one that was adopted by kernel CI. Uh, and so we actually expect that that will allow us to interoperate with kernel CI backends. Uh, 
front ends, depending on how you consider it. But um, uh, the purpose of this is to allow consistent handling of test results. So every test that we have in the system produces the same format file. So things like our report generator, our data visualization uh, can all operate. And we haven't added, well, we have some very limited query capabilities, but um, we'll be at, able to make a much more rich querying system so that you can, uh, you can look at the test data. No matter which test it's coming from, all the data is the same. Uh, that was a big project, and a lot of the credit for that goes to Daniel, so for getting that done. Um, the test dependency system, uh, another, another big area of testing is when we want to be able to scale the system so we can have thousands or possibly tens of thousands of tests, but in order to make it tractable for end users, uh, we need to make sure that we don't run tests that make no sense on particular hardware. So we have added a test dependency system. The test itself declares some prerequisites in the fuegotest.shell. That's kind of the main script that runs for a test. Uh, so Fuego evaluates those dependencies and aborts the test if, if the dependencies are not met. Uh, the dependencies right now can be expressed in two ways, uh, declaratively and imperatively. Uh, you can specify them as need, what we call as need variables. So you can say I need memory, you can say I need 200 meg of RAM or I need 2 gig of RAM or something. Uh, and there's storage, kconfig, you can specify whether the, the test needs to be root. Um, and so with this, uh, you can check before you actually run the test or before you even build the test that, uh, that it makes sense to run the test on your hardware. Uh, for instance, on the, it, using the kconfig, if you don't have a particular kconfig, it's a hardware test and you don't have the hardware, it makes no sense to run the test. The main purpose of this currently is to prevent a costly build and execute phase, so you don't go ahead and build uh, software and try to execute it when it's not going to run any anyway. Um, but in the future, we'd also like to use this to be able to automatically select tests to run on your hardware. Um, so the other thing that we uh, added, uh, which is a pretty big deal, I think, is uh, complex pass criteria handling. So Fuego uh, in the 1.1 <coughs> release and in prior releases had some mechanisms uh, for <coughs> specifying a certain number of pass fail, but they were very ad, -ha ad hoc. Uh, it, was, it was kind of weird. This kind of pulls all the, all the pass criteria into a single file. So you may wonder what a pass criteria is. If, you, if, you, if you're not familiar with testing, you may assume that, well, in order for you know, like the whole suite to pass, all the subtests have to pass. Well, that's a naive view of how things work in testing. Uh, it's often the case that lots of that you get failures all over the place, and some of them you care about, and some you don't care about. And some are like things that are going to get fixed in the future. Some are things that are never going to get fixed, and so you have to have a way to just ignore them permanently. Um, and so that's what this pass criteria is. So we have a JSON file uh, that indicates. Um, what things are, you know, can be the thresholds for the different benchmarks, uh, that needs to be customized on a per, per board basis, or maybe per file system basis. You can, you can specify a list of allowed failures, you can specify counts of either things that must, must succeed or uh, are allowed to fail. Uh, and these can be customized per board, and that's the, kind of the intent, is that people, when you get, when you run LTP, the reason that LTP is kind of not given much respect in the industry is because you run LTP and you get like 1,200 er uh, 1200 successes and you know 150 errors and it's like good luck, figure it out. <laughs> and so what we want to do is uh, be able to say well on a beagle bone that's running you know the standard Debian kernel this is what you should expect to see and we can encode that now in a JSON file and so anyone who uses that same board can now has something they can use to evaluate their results. If you get something different than what I got, then that's an interesting result. But all those other things that are failing that you don't care about, um, well, that that are kind of expected to fail, you don't need to care about. Um, in the future, we don't do this now, but it would be nice to be able to write some of these results automatically to be able to save out the criteria file, particularly for benchmarks. Uh, so one of the things that's in the criteria file is the benchmarks. The one that fails consistently for me, because I'm not running a preempt RT kernel, is when I'm running the real-time tests inside Fuego, uh, my BeagleBone fails uh, because I, my latencies are way too high. 
because uh, I don't actually have a real-time system running. Uh, but you want to tune that per board, right? It's going to be different depending on uh, what test you're running, uh, what the hardware is, what your kernel config is. And uh, so it makes no sense. You know, my, my results, I'm not going to get the same results as someone else who's, who's using different kind of a test environment. Uh, and we, want, we should be able to write those automatically. So, uh, for instance, we have a lot of file system tests. We have at least 10 file system tests. And, uh, but those are, those are very specific to, uh, to your board and your, your hardware and other, other things. So those need to be customizable, and this is what this uh, JSON file does. Um, okay, so we have got that. The other thing we added is dynamic board variables. So we have this notion that uh, you have a list of uh, attributes of the board uh, that are statically defined by the user when they set up the system. Uh, but dynamic board variables allows tests and users to add additional variables at runtime. Uh, so we can save persistent information about the board. Uh, and then these are automatically included in the test in, in the environment in the test. Uh, so the, it's, the purpose of this is to allow communication between tests and to save information off uh, that can be used. Uh, so you can imagine, for example, an installer could go out and probe the board, find out a bunch of artifacts, uh, in, information about it, and save those off as board variables so the user doesn't have to. Uh, the other thing is that you could, if you have a kernel build test, it, it knows where the config path is, so it can hand it. It could notify, basically notify other tests in the system uh, where that config path is by by adding a board variable. Um, we did some work on the charting. So Fuego already includes some charting options, uh, but this was uh, reorganized and kind of refactored in the 1.2 release. Uh, mostly, this was a, a reorganization of internal code. Uh, we support three chart types. We added some new, new chart types. We have two HTML tables, uh, individual test case results, aggregate results, and then JavaScript plots of measurement data. Um, and uh, before, we really only had the JavaScript plots. Uh, we now added a new file called chartconfig uh, that will, that right now it's, it's it's very little uh, capability is, is configurable, but the intent is to put in a bunch more configuration capability into chart config so that uh, users can control the visualization for a test. So I may be interested, like when I run cyclic test, I may be interested in you know, interrupt latency. Uh, someone else may be interested in some other thing, and they can easily change chart config and get different charts and graphs uh, for that type of benchmark. Um, well, we can now test source, uh, obtain test source from Git repositories. Uh, so previously, we had uh, all of the source was included in Fuego as tarballs, and now you can specify a Git repo, a Git repository, and a specific reference to use from that repository. Commit tag or version, uh, and this is this one's kind of obvious. Fuego actually is a fairly old system. It was the, it started life probably at least four years ago. Um, and uh, these days, a lot of code is now maintained in Git repositories. And it's not as common to have tarballs lying around. Uh, there is a caveat on this, though, uh, a little warning. Uh, if, you use, uh, if you use source from a Git repository, that's not been pre-pulled into our repository. And so uh, it requires network access during a build. Uh, which our tarballs do not. Tarballs is all kind of a self-contained system. And this requires that when you actually instantiate the test, it's going to go grab the source from the Git repository and, and build it when you run the test. Uh, we did some transport modifications, mostly to support integration with Lava. But we now have a transport connect and disconnect function. These can be used for session setup and teardown. Uh, but you can also, we haven't done this yet, but you can also use these for provisioning the board. <coughs> Uh, or for doing a reservation in some external system, like Lava. So you could say, I want to reserve a board in the Lava system and, and run tests on it. And then there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff we did in this, in this release to uh, do test improvements. Uh, we had to do a bunch of work on Arch64 tool chains. Uh, we added dependency information to some of the tests. Uh, we fixed some other tool chain issues. Uh, some of the test program source was updated. Um, we added some of, some parsers to some of the functional tests, and uh, we did parser improvements in general. Every test in Fuego has uh, 
a, a parser that converts whatever the test produces into our a format that we understand. That's how we get our unified output. Um, and so we made some changes to the parser system uh, to make that easier. Um, and then lots of other bug fixes were made. In particular, uh, LTP is this big, monstrous test framework uh, that uh, has literally tens of thousands of individual test cases in it. Um, and we, there are some people who complained that they didn't want to deploy it to target every time they ran Fuego. So we've made it possible to support, if you already have it pre-installed, so some people actually build this as part of their Yocto project, and it's already on their system, so they said, well, we don't want you to, we don't want Fuego to build its own, we'll just use the one that we already have installed. Um, but it, uh, even if it's not pre-installed in your Yocto distribution, uh, you can run a Fuego test and install it once yourself in a persistent location, and uh, then not have to reinstall it in the future. So you can use Fuego to kind of set up for uh, a series of uh, testing LTP. Um, and then we also allow the reuse of code between LTP test jobs. The LTP build is quite big. I think it's a couple of gig. And uh, when you have a, a big farm, uh, we were building the software multiple times for every target. And so this, we did some stuff to allow us to share code uh, when we're using the same tool chain. And, uh, so reduces the time required to do builds because you can leverage uh, already built software, uh, but also reduces the disk space required if you have a farm. Okay, so that's pretty much the 1.2.1 release. So there's a lot of stuff. Again, I said it was pretty specific to, uh, to Fuego. Uh, in terms of our processes, so our communication is actually going pretty well. We have a mailing list. Uh, we have a monthly call, conference call. Uh, actually, we glom on to the AGL uh, continuous integration monthly call. Um, and uh, so that's been going okay. And then we have had uh, our very first hackathon, and we'll have another hackathon tomorrow. So we have some ways to co communicate. Uh, that's our face-to-face -face thing. Uh, one thing I would say about our process is we are currently missing some contributor guidelines. Uh, we have kind of uh, eased into a set of conventions uh, in the code, but it'd be good to kind of formalize those. We ought to, so we've been doing signed off buys in our commits, and we should actually expressly put down that we have a developer certificate of origin, and that that's part of our process is we need those on, on uh, commits that are submitted. A code style guide, uh, mostly the style guide is about indentation. Uh, Fuego scripts, uh, the bulk of Fuego really exists in these, uh, these shell scripts. And so, I, you know, how much style can you have in a shell script? <laughs> but, uh, uh, but we would like at least to get some consistent indentation. Uh, right now it's kind of all over the place. So we've kind of settled into uh, four spaces and no tabs uh, for indentation, but we should Modify that, uh, put it in a file somewhere as an official guideline, uh, and then maybe provide some patch submission tips. So kind of like the kernels uh, submitting patches. Um, okay, so some of the projects that are actually currently going on. Uh, there's board automation standards. I, in my previous uh, thing, I talk uh, talk about ELC. I talked about there's this board farm initiative. Really like to get the industry moving along on defining some standards for board automation for farms. Um, I, I talked to the Linux Foundation, the Core Embedded Linux project, and I actually got funding for two projects that we're going to use contractors for. Well, one of them. Uh, the Fuego release self-test and the Fuego test server. We had a hackathon in China. Uh, we're having a hackathon tomorrow. And we have some features that are in progress. So the board automation standards, uh, I guess I already talked about this. There was a um, I gave a presentation at Lenaro Connect in September where I proposed some stuff to the Lava guys. Uh, they weren't really too keen on it. They're kind of set in their ways. But there was uh, much better meetings at Embedded yeah, Linux Conference Europe. Uh, Pengatronics uh, has a tool called LabGrid. Linutronics is doing a combination of R4D and LabVirt. Uh, Sony is using a tool called TTC that I didn't put on here. but. Uh, there was a BOF and resulted in some collaboration. There's now an eLinux page and a mailing list. And uh, if you are doing some of this stuff, if you're interested in Board Farm and some of the technology 
software and hardware for it, please join the discussions. Uh, in terms of Linux Foundation funding, uh, I presented four projects to the Linux Foundation for funding, and I got two of them funded, uh, two of them not. And I was bummed, especially bummed about the last one, because I'll probably end up doing a lot of that myself, the documentation conversion. Um, I'm going to come back to those, those projects, uh, but anyway. Uh, we had a China hackathon, was held in Shanghai, November 3rd through 5th. Uh, Fujitsu employees uh, over in China were the mentors at the event, uh, Liu Wenlong and Bao Fei. Uh, we ended up having five students work on Fuego. Uh, they did some work. On, they ended up deciding that they, what they wanted to do was work on a notification mechanism. So uh, apparently they added a feature to allow you to specify like an email address to get notified when a test completed. Uh, but I haven't been able to access their code. Uh, they also gave us some feedback um, on the wiki. They found the wiki somewhat confusing, which is not surprising <laughs> for a newcomer. That's one of the reasons we want to redo the documentation. Um, and, but we, part, of, part of the China Hackathon was I kind of felt like we had to get some stuff done in place for, the, for them to work on it. So we did get the website and logo completed. Uh, that's our logo, by the way. Uh, there you go. <laughs> um, then we're having a Jap Japan hackathon tomorrow at Sony headquarters in Shinagawa. So it uh, starts at 10.30. Uh, so if you're interested in Fuego, uh, I actually hope that this is a working event. So if you come, bring your laptop and expect to do some coding. So. Uh, we'll see. I, I haven't done, I, so I organized and got the funding for the China Hackathon participation, but I haven't actually done a Fuego Hackathon before, so we'll see what we accomplish tomorrow. Uh, some of the features that are in progress are the Fuego release self-test. So we have a, a de, um, embedded <laughs> system developer, uh, Profusion in Brazil, that is actually going to implement uh, a test of Fuego in Fuego. <laughs> so. It's a release self-test. So it's going to use multiple containers. You'll have a container that is actually executing the test, and then a container that is the container under test. So it's going to be a little bit weird, because we're going to initiate the test here. That's going to initiate some activity over in this other container. That's going to initiate some activity on a target board. And we're going to verify that, that you know when Vigo runs, it actually gets test result back. So the, the interesting thing is that we will be evaluating web results. So we're actually going to look at browser screenshots uh, from the container under test and com be comparing them with uh, reference images to make sure that we didn't break the interface with Jenkins or any of that stuff. So we'll be adding Selenium HQ to Fuego. Uh, the, the nice thing about that is we'll use it for our own release test, but then we'll have that feature that will be available for other tests in the future. So any other tests that we want to do that have to do image comparison, uh, we'll have uh, some of those mechanisms will be available. The other thing that I got funding for was the centralized test server. So um, we actually want to build, right now our, our uh, web server is on just a virtual private uh, machine, virtual machine, and it's not very fast and it's not suitable for uh, collecting results. Uh, so we actually want to build up uh, some physical hardware. And uh, the idea is that eventually you'll be able to submit a job to this uh, centralized server, and someone else can come grab the job, execute it on their hardware, and give you the results back. This is kind of on the back burner at the moment. Uh, first thing would be to build up the hardware, and we're, we're working on that. OK, so the roadmap. I'm going to talk about the recent past, near term, near future, and a little bit of the long term. So. If you look at uh, the features that we really focused on for the 1.2 release uh, were stuff that affected the test API, which is the, the things that someone had to write if they were going to create a new test, um, or, or it affected the test packaging. So uh, we added the unified output format, which affected the parser. Uh, we added the dependency system, which affected the base script for the test, um, and we well, there's a lot of stuff. It, the release prior to that, 1.1, we actually moved a lot of directories around. But that stuff is all kind of settled down now, and we actually wanted to start using it. So, the, so I, we wanted to get that out of the way before we did a big push for new tests, because that, uh, we don't want to have to change a bunch of tests when the API changes. 
Uh, so now we kind of feel more comfortable that we're going to stay with this test API for a while. So the next thing is a big push for new tests. In the near future, uh, we want to work on the documentation. I want to convert it to RE structured test. There's some documentation in DocBook right now and a lot of documentation on the wiki uh, that's in a markdown language. Uh, but we want to convert that. The, the, new, uh, the new rage is to do your uh, open source project documentation in RE structured text. That's what the kernel just converted to. And then to put it on readthedocs.org. And so that's what we want to do. So we'll be doing some refactoring as part of that conversion. I re we really also need some tutorials. It would be good to do some tutorials to explain, because it's a complicated, complex system. It would be nice to kind of help people through it. Uh, then the other thing in the near future, these are kind of the two highest priorities, is I want to look at specific tests for AGL, LTSI, and CIP. And say, well, what, what tests do those systems need? What would be good for them? Um, and so we'll have to do some analysis to see what, what tests to tackle next for those. We have test plans for at least AGL and LTSI. I don't, is there a CIP test plan upstream? I don't know if there is. But, uh, but we need to flesh that out and, and do some other things. Other things coming up in the near future are uh, I'd like to do some enhancements to the test plan mechanism uh, to be able to do controlled test sequences. Right now the plan kind of just lists a, a set of tests to run. Uh, but I'd like to make it a little bit more complicated, add um, multiple, uh, multiple steps, uh, including notification and report generation, and uh, make it a little bit more similar to Jenkins pipelines, if you know what those are. Um, and then we'll need some more fields to, to manage that. The other thing is we did all this work to come up with a unified output format, and now, and we refactored the charting, so now it's time to use those and build a really nice report generator and add some of that extra charting control that we were talking about. Uh, we can do queries. Uh, uh, that is not the right bullet point. <laughs> Looking at LabGrid, that, I think that goes with another bullet point. Yeah, it goes with this one. Uh, the other thing I really want to do near term is look at system provisioning. Uh, so right now, Fuego has the capability to, to build and deploy test software. To the, to the system under test. Um, but the actual install of the platform software, like the AGL platform or the CIP platform, has been out of scope. And we need to pull that in scope. So I want to look at AGL image deploy, uh, the LTSI kernel update, and actually make some mechanisms for those. Um, and uh, full automation is going to require some kind of board management API, which we have not had in Fuego yet. Uh, we've been trying really, really hard to make it so you don't have to have uh, a lot of complexity. So you doesn't, Fuego does not require additional hardware uh, in order to run. And uh, so we're going to try really hard to make it so our tests do not depend on the board management API, um, but, uh, but that uh, if it's there, we can use it to automate more of uh, the tests, the continuous integration. Uh, I probably didn't say that well. The other thing, this bullet, bullet back one is supposed to be with that. So I'm actually looking at LabGrid as a possible solution to the provisioning issue. Um, but we can discuss that more tomorrow. Then longer term, I want to actually do the distributed test network and get to some hardware testing. Uh, and then finally, we have a priority because uh, people have been pounding on us, uh, particularly the AGL folks, they have lava labs. Uh, we have everything now we need to do transport integration. In fact, they, they can do that now in, in Lava. Uh, but we really need test level integration. So there's a different, what we do now is we require that uh, Lava kind of step aside and give us access to the boards uh, that we can run uh, so that we can have a Fuego test directly communicate with the board and, and uh, execute the test and collect the results. That's not the way Lava works. Lava has a, it's, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> Lava does things di very differently. Uh, their whole thing is they provision the board, they boot it, and then everything is supposed to happen automatically with no interaction. And stuff is supposed to come out on the serial port. So there's, um, and the software has to be in the deployed image on the Lava build server. So there's some things we'll have to do 
uh, to support that better. Um, so that's something we'd like to do. Okay, so here's the resources. Fuego web server is right there. There's the mailing list. There's some repositories. And uh, if you are interested in tests, we'd love to have you come join us and play around with our system. So that's our status and roadmap. So any any questions? Yeah, what was the code name for A? What? What was the code name for A release? So oh, for the A. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have an A release. <laughs> yeah, well, I decided to be just like Android, right? Which had no A release, right? <laughs> no, actually, so we, uh, yeah, so technically that would have been the 1.0 release, and that was before we decided to do not, uh, letters. <laughs> so the 1.1 1 .1 release was Blaze. But we, I, we should we should retcon one. We should. <laughs> We should uh, come up with an A release that was like really catchy, like Ash or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's going to happen for D? I, I have a, I actually have a wiki page with with uh, alphabetical, you know, with a bunch of D fire words, a bunch of E fire words. Some some letters are awfully hard to find fire related words for. Uh, but anyway, the the names have no meaning except you know they're just kind of fun. That's what the industry does, so that's what we do. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks a lot.